before losing to the Giants in 2014. We come back in 2015, everybody calls them the fluke and they come back and they win the whole thing. And now suddenly everything changes in Kansas City. We suddenly have the number one rated baseball broadcast in the country. Uh, St. Louis was always up there. Uh, some of the, you know, there are just certain markets that, and it's all percentage on the rating. We suddenly for a three year stretch were either one, two or three. And now I can't go anywhere in town. And not a bad thing. Um, I could take it or leave it. Other than the fact that I know that when I go to the grocery store, or I'm out in public, people want to talk Royals. And you start to understand that we're a major part of people's lives, that we're coming into their living rooms every single day. That's the thing, like going back to surprises, I think that you asked before. I never knew that that, like, maybe you think in your head, hey, that'd be pretty cool to, like one of those years where we were in Arizona, I don't think it was the, that same trip. Maybe it was that game seven. I was walking through the arena. Maybe it was that same trip in Arizona with their main um, sports guy out there in Phoenix. And I had met him. I'd never known him in St. Louis, but he had come from St. Louis before I got there. And so we're walking through the stands, like after he'd done a live shot and, and I'm following around with him just because I'd met him or whatever. And like everybody knew his name. And I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. Like nobody knows who I am. Right. And now like everybody does, not everybody, but it's not what I thought it was going to be. It's not that it's, Hey, well, that's so cool. Everybody knows my name. It's that all these people, like they rely on us for not just their news and their updates, but for their entertainment, their distraction and, and troops overseas or someone sitting in a hospital bed um, may be looking forward to one thing and one thing only. And that's getting up in the middle of the night in the middle East at three in the morning to watch a Royals game or, 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 you know, struggling in that hospital bed all day, but at least knowing that for three hours they get to watch us. So that's sort of the deeper level stuff that nobody taught us in school and nobody, you know, you don't really think about that. And so all of that stuff has happened in Kansas City. That, that, that to me has been the game changer in life. I love hearing that story because it's so true. Like you see the people that are on TV every day with the sport thing, you see them in public and it's like you're a celebrity for them because it's like you never thought you were going to be in that same room. And it shows like the passion you have for that town and how that you are all into bringing a great product with the pregame and post show to the fans of Kansas City Royals. It's, you know, it just, and it's a, like, what a privilege, you know, and, and that, in some ways, it took me a while to think about that, because it, I think it's enough just to live your dream. Like, how many people get to live their dream? So that was always the very, that was, you know, you talk about, and I mentioned this before, you talk about how did you, you know, how did you push through? How did you rally? Because I'm living my dream. But now when you start seeing that your dream leads to more, uh, that's, that's the, that's the high level stuff. And so I don't, I try not to ever take that for granted. I, and then this will sound a little bit cheesy, but you know, and I'm lucky enough, at least during non COVID times to be the guy that's on the field after the game interviewing the star of the game, a lot of Gatorade bucket dumps. Uh, I'm caught in the line of fire a lot. I get a lot of people that ask me what my dry cleaning bill is. That's all fun. Uh, you know, all-star catcher Salvador Perez, that's his, his game. And I'm, I'm off in the target and we're kind of linked together for that. But whether that happens or doesn't, and, you know, I'm interviewing these guys and it's piping out over the sound system, not to mention, you know, uh, onto TVs all over the place. I then have to walk up in this dual role as the reporter and the host. And I don't think anybody else in the country does that. They might double up sometimes, but almost every other market, look at St. Louis. Well, they need a bigger staff because they also have the blues. Mm -hmm. You go up to Minnesota and, you know, if Fox has all the properties, they, they need people for the Timberwolves, the Minnesota Wild, and the Twins. Same as in Detroit with the, you know, Tigers and the Pistons and the, um, and the Red Wings and some of the college stuff, too. We don't, we don't have any of that. So I finished the on-field interview at home. I then have to walk up into the stands. I've got, like, little secret paths underneath to get up because I need to get up there quickly because they're waiting for me. So they're trying to time it out. The guys in the booth are talking and then they go to a commercial and then I'm on the air with my partner. 
And then I'll have to navigate through the fans a little bit and I have to get out to left field where our set is. And this will sound cheesy, but when I'm walking off the field and I know, like I've just finished that interview that there are people watching me as I'm walking and, and like, I'm just, I'm, I'm down there. And I always try to feel my feet walking through the grass. I don't know why at the end of a game, not during the game, during batting practice. And I always just sit there and think, cause it's, you know, it's like any of those stadiums have the greatest manicured lawn that anybody could ever want. Right. And I'm just sitting there thinking you can feel the grass too. And it's like perfect lawn. And you see the grounds crew starting to work on tomorrow. Say hi to some guys, wave some people up in the stands, you know, you know, suddenly looking like a governor or something. I don't know. And 